Hi there, I'm Vic Veer. I'm a ENT or ears, nose and throat surgeon and I work at the Royal National Throat, Nose and Ear Hospital and I also work at Queen's Hospital in Romford in Essex. So today I'm going to talk to you about earwax. Now earwax may not sound very exciting but I want to tell you about what it is, uh, what it does and then how to get rid of it. There are lots of ways of getting rid of it and I've done an experiment on different types of eardrops that work on earwax and I'd like to show you these results with a time-lapse camera. So firstly, what is earwax? Earwax is a uh, waxy substance that's made within your ear canal by some modified sweat glands and earwax is composed of mostly uh, dead skin, uh, cholesterol, alcohols and uh, long chain fatty acids. So officially there are two different types of earwax. There's the dry flaky one where you see that in Asian populations and also in Native Americans and there's also the wet slightly darker version which you see in populations from European and African descent. In practice however most of us surgeons know that there are a few more different types and broadly speaking there's the dry crumbly flaky type of wax then there's a sort of fluffy, wet, um, moist type of earwax, which sort of is a bit like a sponge or, or, or falls apart very easily. And then there's the fudge type of wax, which is quite hard. You can roll up into a ball if you really wanted to, if you felt uh, the need to. So a little fun fact for you, because there's uh, two different types of earwax, it's a genetic difference. Uh, the people with a wet sort of fudge-like uh, earwax are more likely to have armpit odour compared to the dry sort of flaky type of earwax. I don't think it means anything, but it's uh, interesting to know. So why do we have earwax? Well, earwax is created to fight off infections. If you imagine your ear is a small, narrow hole inside your head, it's also quite moist in there, quite warm, it's a perfect breeding ground for infections, bacteria, fungi, etc. So wax has an antibacterial, antifungal effect on uh, bugs within the ear canal. Uh, some of it is because of the fact of its pH. It's slightly more acidic than the, the rest of the skin. Uh, the pH uh, is acidic at 6.1 on average. And that's similar, I think, to like stomach acid. When you eat things, you want to kill off the bugs. The stomach acid can kill off those bugs. And the same thing happens in the ear. The earwax itself does have other antibacterial properties. It's all very mild, but the idea is to try and keep your ear clean because it also is very sticky in, in most people. And that stickiness, um, if you lose something in your ear or some dust or some debris in your ear, it sticks to the earwax. And by another mechanism altogether, it drags that debris out of your ear. So the way it drags it out is that there's a transport mechanism in your ear. The, uh, the skin lining of your ear canal doesn't just stay still, like uh, normal skin on your hand or on your arm or something. What it does is it actively grows out of your ear. So if I made a little marker pen on the inside of your ear, uh, ear canal, right at the bottom, after a few months, if you looked in the ear again, that permanent marker wouldn't be deep in the ear, it'd come out here somewhere. So the cells are always growing out of the ear. And that's the way it drags through the wax as well. So what you do is you make a little bit of wax at the bottom and then it gets spread very thinly throughout the ear canal. In fact, a lot of people think they don't have wax at all, but if you look very, very carefully, there is a very thin layer of wax in your ear. And not being able to see wax is pretty much a normal thing. Having big globs of wax in your ear is abnormal. So this uh, conveyor belt of cells growing out of your ear is very, very slow. It's like a travelator. And it goes at about 0.2 millimetres per day or about one and a half millimetres a week. So it takes about three or four months for the wax from the bottom of your ear canal to come out to the outside. Some people also think that moving your jaw seems to ease the wax out. And I don't believe this is completely true unless the wax is right on the edge here. Because if you put your finger in your ear and try to open your mouth, you do feel some movement of the ear canal. But actually, it's, most of the wax comes from deep inside and it comes through in this conveyor belt rather than your jaw action. So what are the reasons for having too much earwax? Well, firstly, I'd better say from the start, cotton buds are the worst thing you can do for your ears. It's terrible because most of the time all you're doing is pushing the earwax back into your ear. But more importantly, 
Some people use cotton buds to scratch their ear canal. And all you're really doing is scratching off that delicate single layer of cells which are transporting your wax out. And when you scratch that, you damage that, con um, that conveyor belt and therefore it stops working at that point. So the wax comes through in a thin, thin membrane but hits this area where there is no skin left anymore and then starts building up in that area because there's no way to transport that wax out. With time, however, when the skin starts growing back, it starts itching and you feel like scratching it again. So instead of scratching it again, just leave it because if you don't, the skin never gets to grow back. It's a bit like when we were children and our parents said to us, stop um, picking the scabs on our elbows and, and on our knees. It itches because the skin is growing back and you want that transport system, that layer of cells to grow back so that the wax can come out. Unfortunately, sometimes, the mound of wax that has accumulated in your ear canal has got so big that the transport system can't drag it out and therefore it just builds up over and over again and then people push it back in again with the cotton bud and the problem becomes so bad that actually you need to have it dealt with by a doctor or some ear drops or something. Some people get an accumulation of earwax because their ear canals are slightly narrow, particularly on the outside. Uh, and this could be because of uh, lots of infections that slowly stenosed or narrowed down the ear canal so the wax can't actually get out and get stuck. Um, you'll see some pictures that I'm drawing at the same time. Sorry if it's quite boring. Uh, I'll try and speed up my drawing so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Uh, another reason why your ear canal can be narrow because as we get older, this part of your ear, what we call the conchal bowl, just here, just behind the ear, uh, ear hole, that slips forward as you get older. And as you get older and this slips forward, that closes up the ear hole and therefore wax can't get out. And another reason why uh, you can have accumulation of earwax is sometimes after an operation or if there's a deep hole inside your ear. Normally the ear canal is just a narrow tube, but sometimes you can get this big uh, divot or, or, a, or a crater within the ear canal and the wax can't get round the edge of that hole. Uh, and sometimes you need to have an operation called an obliteration. And what that does is, rather than it sounding rather fancy um, and dangerous, all you're doing is filling in that hole so the earwax can grow in a straight line. And so the operations for dealing with earwax are, are related to making the ear hole look, or the ear canal looking as normal as possible, so the wax can make its way out without getting stuck at any, any points. So how does one get rid of earwax? Now there are lots of things you can do. Uh, the first thing you can do is just stop using cotton buds or ear pins or whatever you use, um, uh, hair pins to pull out uh, earwax. It just doesn't work and all you're doing is damaging the ear canal and damaging that transport system that pulls the wax out. You can use ear drops and that's quite useful for dissolving and uh, softening the earwax so it just falls out naturally. Then the next thing you can do is see someone who will syringe your ear. And all that is is using water to flush out the earwax from inside your ear so it comes out with a sort of flow of pressure of the water. Now, an awful lot of um, doctors in the UK, the family doctors particularly, aren't doing syringing anymore, although it used to be done for many, many years. And that's because people are worried that blasting water in the ear may damage the eardrum. It's quite rare, but can happen. Now, uh, another way for removing wax is to use uh, microsuction. Microsuction is a tiny little uh, vacuum cleaner or hoover that goes into your ear and hoovers up or cleans up the, um, the wax. Now, uh, I'm not going to do a video uh, about that. It's, quite, uh, it's an involved thing, but I'll try and make another one in the future. But it's probably, in a good pair of hands, it's probably the safest way to get rid of earwax. And lastly, in very extreme cases, people sometimes need surgery. That's either to open up a narrowing in the ear canal to let the wax come out naturally or to fill in any of those divots I was telling you about earlier. So often the big question I have from patients is which eardrop should I be using? Now, uh, rather than me just telling you what I think, I thought I'd do an experiment. What I did was I found uh, three different patients and they kindly donated their earwax to me. I made sure there are three different types of earwax. One was the flaky, crumbly type, one was the wet, moist type, and one was the fudge, sort of roll up, roll up into a ball type. And they kindly donated their earwax and I put them into about five test tubes. 
So I want to say thank you very much to those patients. You, uh, all three of you know who you are. And um, you can see it's been used for a good cause. Uh, it's an experiment, it's a research study. And what I did was I looked through the internet and looked at the, the most common remedies for earwax. Now, the first one I found was olive oil. Lots of people seem to use olive oil. Some people also said almond oil. But I tried that separately and I found that almond oil and olive oil were exactly the same. So I just used olive oil because everyone seems to use olive oil. It's quite cheap to come by. Now, I also got some uh, hydrogen peroxide, which is commonly prescribed uh, in America. Not so much in this country. Um, and I sometimes worry about the, the amount of free radicals that are produced from hydrogen peroxide. It may damage the hearing or balance apparatus in the ear. But um, it must be safe because hundreds and millions of people must have used hydrogen peroxide for earwax. Um, uh, so I don't use it. I tend to use something called uh, sodium bicarbonate, uh, which I think works very well. Uh, so I've tried that in my third bottle and I'll show you these soon as well. Now the only problem with sodium bicarbonate, I think, is that it is alkali, so the opposite of acid. And so what I'm slightly worried about is that it may, be, uh, may give you an increased risk of getting a, an ear infection, because without the acid in your ear, you may get something called swimmer's ear, um, and swimmers tend to swim, all the wax comes out of there, they tend to get uh, infections, uh, because all the acid is neutralised. And sodium bicarbonate has a pH of around about 8, uh, where you want the ear canal to have a pH of around about 6. So I was slightly worried about that, but I put it down as one of my uh, options in my test tube, test tube number 3. Now, test tube number 4 is uh, ear calm. Now, ear calm is a remedy for people who have got an ear infection, but don't really need to have antibiotics. I often use ear calm to get rid of very mild infections, and that's some of the guidelines we have in this country from the ENT UK uh, guidelines about very mild infections uh, called otitis externa. And you can use ear calm, which is just basically an acid. It's very similar to uh, vinegar, uh, acetic acid. And it has a pH of roughly about six as well. And I thought, well, why not try it? Uh, so I've tried in my fourth bottle, Ear Calm. Sorry, the other good thing about uh, Ear Calm is that you can use it to prevent you from getting an infection. So, for example, the swimmers. I know an awful lot of Olympic swimmers who, after they've gone for a swim, they spray their ears with Ear Calm so that you replace the acid in your ears. That way you can avoid getting an infection because you've washed out all the acid. Now, most of these uh, remedies are approximately between four to ten pounds each. So what I really wanted to do, apart from the olive oil, obviously, but what I wanted to do is come up with a very cheap alternative. So what I did was I found some steam distilled water uh, and I wanted to use that as well. Again, the pH of uh, distilled water, as long as it's steam distilled water, is about 6.0. So very close to earwax levels. So I wanted to use that as well. It's very, very cheap. You can get a bottle of about this big for about uh, so a litre and a half for, for about five to six pounds. Now, you'll soon see that watching wax dissolve on the, the video behind me is um, incredibly boring. I never realised how boring watching uh, wax dissolve could be. So uh, what I did was I tried to use a time lapse uh, on, my, uh, on this camera that I'm using right now. And the idea is I'll take a picture every five seconds or then every five minutes. The uh, trouble is, it was going so slowly that my battery would just run out. And so it's a little bit uh, higgledy-piggledy. The, um, the, I'm taking photos from time to time. Uh, and you'll notice, if you look at the video, that actually most of the action occurs in the first 24 hours. So the first few, um, first few time-lapse camera um, movies it goes quite quickly at the start, but then it becomes very boring. I carried on um, checking the uh, wax uh, for about five to six days. So remember, there is 10 mils in each of these uh, test tubes, each with a different remedy, starting off with olive oil, hydrogen peroxide, sodium bicarbonate, ear calm, and distilled water. And you can see that every so often I shook the test tubes around just to give it a little nudge to see if I can get any movement out of it. Uh, and I shook them all the same amount, and you can see that there's a big difference between the different remedies I've got there for you. Now, firstly, the olive oil. As you can see, even after five days, nothing happened. 
made no difference whatsoever. And you can see this also in the research studies. If you looked at the research studies about earwax, olive oil seems to do absolutely nothing to earwax. They say it softens it. You know, I've seen people go away, try olive oil, come back, and me trying to clean it is it's exactly the same as it was before. So personally, I wouldn't recommend olive oil ever. It does nothing. I was somewhat surprised by hydrogen peroxide. I thought that would do something, but it seems not to have done anything at all. It, uh, uh, perhaps I had a slightly different hydrogen peroxide than what the uh, American physicians would use. But again, I saw very little change in the hydrogen peroxide. It did seem to rise, and it seems like those two layers to this um, uh, formulation. There was like a watery layer and an oil layer at top. But again, nothing really moved, and I couldn't really shake it either. So I can't recommend this formulation of uh, hydrogen peroxide either. So sodium bicarbonate, thankfully, was much better. You can see that it's slowly breaking up the wax um, and at the end of five days, it's almost completely um, dissolved most of the wax. Uh, still, the fudge type of wax, you can see there's a little spot there, uh, was the most resistant of all of them. And that makes sense because it's, it's the most dense version of earwax. Uh, but the, um, the flaky type of earwax disappeared very quickly. Uh, and actually, the, so did the wet, fluffy type of earwax. So the only problem with sodium bicarbonate, which I've heard from people, is that it becomes very drying in the ear. People don't particularly like using sodium bicarbonate in the ear. Uh, and so that's a, a thing against uh, using sodium bicarbonate, even though it works very well for dissolving earwax. Now, if you look at the ear calm uh, version, which is the fourth uh, test tube along, you can see that it becomes, it starts off very, very cloudy, like a, a colloid in there. And uh, shaking it around, you can barely see through it. But I saw, if I looked at it very carefully, that apart from the fudge type of earwax, uh, it seemed to dissolve the wax very quickly. So it's quite useful. It helps prevent infections whilst also dissolving earwax. I think it's great. Uh, it is quite expensive, though. I think um, it costs approximately 20 pounds for 10 mils. So it's a lot more expensive than sodium bicarbonate, which is roughly about four pounds. Um, and then I go on to distilled water. You can see distilled water, the number five test tube, again, worked very well, similar to, I think, uh, as sodium bicarbonate in ear calm. And it's a lot cheaper, swishing it around. Uh, it seemed to do great things and flush out uh, or dissolve the earwax very well. Uh, it's slightly worrying, I thought to myself later, that um, although it's sterile when you first open it, trying to go through a whole bottle of this stuff with time, it's unlikely to be sterile for very long. So although it's cheaper, you probably, unless you're using a whole bottle, uh, it's probably not the best idea. And also this is swimmer's ear officially, there is a chance of you getting an infection. Now, like I said, ear calm is a pH of about six, so is um, a distilled water. So I suspect that it should be safe, but there is no trial of anyone putting uh, distilled water in their ear. But um, the research studies that show that distilled water works very well. So in summary, the olive oil, I think, did absolutely nothing, and I would not bother with it at all. The uh, hydrogen peroxide, rather strangely did nothing either. Um, so I can't recommend that based on this experiment. Uh, the sodium bicarbonate worked brilliantly. However, there is that chance of causing an infection and it can also dry your ear. Um, ear calm I thought worked very well. It had those little bubbles in there as well. Uh, had those little bubbles in there as well. That seemed to help um, maybe to breaking up the earwax, uh, but it's quite expensive. Distilled water is by far the cheapest. Um, and seem to work just as well as sodium bicarbonate. I've never had any problems of people saying to me, oh, the ear calm made my ear feel very dry. So it may be that flushing out all the wax and the acid seems to make your ear feel dry. It doesn't like a, an alkaline environment, it likes an acid environment. At least that's what I'm hoping. So the take home messages are don't use cotton buds because you're destroying the, uh, the transport system in your ear. Try and avoid uh, olive oil. I don't think it works at all. Use perhaps distilled water, sodium bicarbonate or ear calm to dissolve your wax because the others seem not to do anything. Um, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you could please like this video and subscribe to my channel, that will really help me. Um, thanks again.